Power Nation. Hope that you're doing quite well. This is Dr. Clarkson, and this is another edition of Are You Listening? On this edition of Are You Listening, Xavier Tobias is joined by Carica White, Queen Sugar herself. And we're going to learn a little bit more about what she does every day and what some sage advice that she can offer to us here at Pirate Nation. Xavier, take it away. Uh, hello, Miss White. How are you doing today? I am just fine, Xavier. That's great. Um, if you don't mind, I have a couple of questions for you for your answer. Sure. All right. The first one we're starting off with is, where did your interest in sugar come from? So my interest in sugar came from my desire to um, work in manufacturing. And you may say, well, where did your interest in manufacturing come from? And that came from a dream that I had of um, I wanted to be like Madam C.J. Walker, if you know who she is, to go to school so that I could learn how to do that. I got my degree in chemical engineering and wanted to go into manufacturing. And then after I graduated college, um, I didn't, I wasn't into sugar manufacturing at that point. Um, I went into another, uh, another industry, but it was still manufacturing. And so, um, Things happen in life that I wasn't able to, you know, <laughs> have my own hair care company. But nevertheless, I was able to find sugar refining here in Baltimore. And I've been here ever since. And that's been the closest that I've gotten to hair care. <laughs> it's food, right? And it's something that everybody uh, needs. Everybody. So um, that's where I became interested in, in sugar refining. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, how long does it take to process? How long does the process take to refine sugar? That's a really, really good question, and a lot of people don't don't realize or recognize that it is a lot that's involved in sugar refining itself. So I'll take you all the way back to where they actually cut the cane sugar um, in the fields. So when it comes to us, it comes refined already. So when they take that sugar cane from the field, it goes through its process um, and they extract the sugar out of that sugar cane. When it hits the refinery that I manage here on a daily basis, it looks more like sand, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a sugar crystal in and of itself, small sugar crystals. But of course now it's still not necessarily ready for anyone to eat. So once we get it um, and it starts in our process, it is literally about a 16 to 24 hour process. If you were to follow that one grain of sugar throughout the entire, uh, through all of the steps that it takes to process or refine that sugar. So uh, when it starts, it gets washed. It goes through a number of different filtration processes it gets melted, uh, it gets boiled over again, or we call it boiling, but it's basically crystallization. Um, from that process, you have the sugar and the syrup that are mixed together. We separate it after it's separated and it's white granulated sugar. It goes through a drying process. From the drying process, it, it goes to a silo or a bin where it'll sit and wait to get packed and then it'll make its way to a packaging line. That sounds like a lot of steps. It is. It's a lot of steps. A lot of steps. Uh, if you don't want me asking, what does refine mean? So that's a really, really good question. Um, refining is this. So refining is simply taking that sugar crystal and you want to extract or remove the purities from it itself and get down to as much of the pure crystal as you possibly can. Now, the book definition of, of refining may be a little bit different, um, but refining itself, sugar refining itself, takes a number of those different steps that I talked about, a lot of heat and all of that good stuff in order to get us to from a grain of raw sugar to now what we call granulated sugar or sugar that you put on your table or that you pour on your cereal. All right, next question. Um, okay. Someone is interested in your line of work, where should they start? That is, that's a good question as well. You guys did a really, really good job on the questions. So they can start in a number of different places. So you take a person like myself, 
Um, I went the route of actually going to college, um, getting a degree, a technical degree. So when I say a technical degree, it could be a degree in engineering, or it could be a degree in business. Um, it, we have accountants that work here. We have finance people that work here. Um, of course, they're not necessarily uh, out in the plant, but they are attached to the business, right? So if you're interested in business, we have a place here for you at the plant. Um, if you're technically inclined, you like mechanical stuff, you like to know how things work and interact and stuff like that. Um, we have we have jobs here for you as well. That could be as high as like an engineer such as myself, or it could be mechanics that actually work the line. Mechanics that work our lines here, they don't have to have a college degree. Um, they just have to have that technical or mechanical aptitude. Um, some of them have um, gone to maybe a technical school, like a technical high school or something like that. They get out of high school, they get a job, and, and we have those opportunities here for them. Um, we also have people that are interested in and in work on electrical systems. Um, those can be electrical engineers and those can be electricians that do the troubleshooting. We have folks that like programming um, and we call them here controls engineers. Um, these are the folks. So when you've got those gaming skills and I know young folks like the game, right? Parlay that into something that will teach you how to actually code and program because we have people that do that for us here so that uh, the folks in the refining department have an interface that they're using to make all of these products that we make here at the sugar refinery. So we have controls engineers that, that do that. Um, we have operators. Um, and, and there's a wide number of operators and we have different names for them. But the operators that work here, many of them are only high school educated. So if, if for those uh, young students that are listening to me today, don't feel like you have to be forced into college. And, and I'm not knocking college at all, but there's a lot of industry that it, in this um, particular industry or sugar refining or manufacturing itself, there's a home for you if you are technically inclined, if you've got a high school diploma and there's uh, work for you here if you are um, technically inclined and you have an engineering degree or a, a mathematical degree or, or those types of things. So we have a number of different um, jobs that we can offer. So it covers a number of different interests. So any of those interests, you got them, we have a place for you. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Um, next question. Uh, if you could give your younger version, a younger version of yourself some advice, what would it be? <laughs> um, so a couple of things. I think a younger version of myself, um, I was really, really determined uh, coming up. And I'm not saying that it's not good to not be determined, right? But really, really determined and um, really goal oriented when I was younger. Um, and I didn't give myself a lot of room to explore. Um, and I admire young people today because I think you guys give yourselves a lot of room to explore and to try new things. So I would say the first thing is never be afraid to try new things. On the flip side of that, um, I would also say, don't be afraid to fail. Like I really, really was afraid of failing, right? And I didn't want to fail and I did everything in my power, everything in my, the, in my power I could not to fail. Um, but as you become a business professional, you will quickly realize that there, failure is a part of life, right? It's a, a part of life, it's a part of growing up. It's a part of even discovering who you are. So don't be afraid to fail because it is going to make you who you are. Um, and I would say the third thing is don't feel like you've got to say, hey, I want to be this one thing in life. Um, I think you have opportunity and you have room to be whatever it is you want to be. And sometimes that means you're two or three things, right? So. Um, I used to think, hey, I'm going to have this hair care company that eventually got me to a point where I'm a plant manager. I'm not going to be a plant manager forever. I'll do something else. And I, I, I'm allowing myself to have that room to want to do something else and to pivot to something else. Those were some, those were some wise, uh, wise words from me. I really appreciate it. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Miss White, for taking time out your very busy schedule for coming to talk to us at Paul. We really appreciate it. All right. I thank you, Xavier. You were a wonderful host. And I want to give a shout out to all of the students and the faculty and staff at Paul Public Charter School. Thank you for having me on today. And I wish you all the very best and a wonderful end to the school year. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. You too. Bye bye. We want to send a huge thank you to the wonderful people at Ford's Theater who have sponsored our program here at Paul Public Charter School. Are You Listening has been with us for now two years, and we're really grateful to the wonderful people that are part of Ford's Theater, who of course instill and pour into our students every day. Once again, a huge shout out to Carica White, Queen Sugar herself, and of course, Xavier Tobias, who wrote, produced, and directed this episode of Are You Listening? My name is Dr. Clarkson, and hey, we'll see you next time.